we discussed the n type semiconductor we discussed the n type semiconductor now we come to the p type semiconductor now it is this is the second type of extrinsic semiconductor fine so so we had seen till now we have we have the intrinsic and extrinsic correct then extrinsic <coughs> is of two types n type and p type we have done this we have done this we are now doing this okay now this is formed when this is formed when an intrinsic semiconductor intrinsic semiconductor is doped with semiconductor is doped with with is doped with it is doped with <coughs> with trivalent atoms trivalent atoms like boron <coughs> okay it's a trivalent atom boron now what happens <coughs> our our lattice is again the same okay our lattice is like this something like this silicon 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 okay fine now what happens say one of the central atoms one of the atoms gets replaced by by boron now boron is trivalent so what happens three of its electrons they <clears throat> enter into bonding with three of the neighboring silicon atoms and the fourth one is simply not able to bond that means this which looks like a bond is actually a hole we understand this is actually a hole and and what happens so 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 it, so so i'll have an overwhelming number of uh, a lot of holes due to that what happens many of the conduction electrons they'll fall into it and the number of electrons will come down fine each trivalent atom introduces a hole into the into the silicon lattice <clears throat> okay many electrons fall into this and the number of free electrons the number of free electrons <clears throat> decreases correct the number of free electrons decreases thus nh becomes very very greater than ne 
okay since the majority courier the majority carriers are positively charged holes positively charged holes the semiconductor is called the the doped semiconductor the doped semiconductor is called p type semiconductor p type semiconductor <coughs> okay obviously as we discussed earlier the overall charge on the conductor is still zero okay however the overall charge the overall charge is still zero we get that point the overall charge is still zero fine and and n e into n h is still n i square even though n h is very 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 large okay so the conductivity obviously goes up the conductivity obviously goes up but it is still not clear how we have been able to gain a greater control over the flow of electrons that will be clear when you actually form a p n junction okay and that becomes a a diode okay and that becomes a diode many many peculiarities of those diodes we'll study in physics but at least we'll have a glance through what a diode is what is it meant to do and how is it possible that that getting a get doping it with something why does a pn junction actually actually produces greater control over the flow of electrons because ultimately that's what we are doing that's why we are doing all this okay another thing that is very important for you to understand is understand is understand is we are using these things in 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 low current applications mostly except the thyristors and maybe the power diodes which are used for heavy current usage mostly you are you are using it at a very very small amount of current and the heat dissipation is not that important for us okay so the conductivity part that gets subdued due to that but the the ease of control of the electrons and holes is what i am trying for and that we'll see how how we are able to get get uh, a greater control over the flow of electrons fine hmm okay fine we understand the p type semiconductors how do we do the doping it is done actually molecule by molecule the you you actually dope it while you are uh, while you are building a silicon wafer you take a take a small 
chip kind of thing over that you start depositing depositing silicon atoms and in that you have got whatever ppm you require the desired ppm of of these molecules mixed and they start depositing layer by layer okay so that that whole so so whatever you make it is an integrated kind of thing and that's why you call them integrated chips ICs okay and ICs are responsible for for this boom of the technology and the communication revolution that you are seeing around <coughs> okay how costly is it it's cheap it's quite cheap 